something, say something. If you see something that just doesn't fit, we do encourage you to call. Some folks have concerns with whether or not they should call 911 about a suspicious or an unattended device. And to us, we say, if you feel like you don't know if you need to call, consider your surroundings. Are you near something, uh, a building or an area that is significant or a sensitive area? Or is what you've seen near some type of significant event like a parade, a festival, or a sporting event? If it is, then you probably should give us a call. If nothing else, um, go ahead, if, err on the side of caution, call 911, a patrol officer will come out and generally the patrol officer will assess whether the bomb squad needs to come out or not. One thing we want to let everyone know that is if you do see an item that you feel like you have concerns with, please leave it where you found it. We have had situations in the past where folks have tried to help us out and with good intentions they have moved devices or potential explosive items to areas where they thought that we would have easier access getting to them and we encourage folks not to do that. We will get access to it the best way we can, best to just be safe and leave it alone until the bomb squad arrives. If you can do it safely, we also encourage you to take a picture like the citizen did because that gives us a good idea of what we're looking at before we get on scene and we can start formulating a game plan. If you can't, take good mental notes of what you're looking at so that you can tell the patrol officer or tell us when we arrive, what does it look like? How big is it? What size is it? Where is it located? What color is it? Did you see anything, smell anything? What sounds did you hear? All those things are very important to us and good information for us to have once we arrive. Another thing that we want to encourage uh, folks to do is please call us if you feel like you're encountering illegal fireworks. When we say illegal fireworks, fireworks are illegal in North Carolina. Uh, most fireworks that explode, project, anything like that. But what we are most concerned about is improvised and homemade fireworks. That trend is rising nationwide. We are seeing it here in Charlotte and it's being seen elsewhere. These are very sensitive and they're very dangerous. So we encourage you, if you know of anyone that's using, manufacturing, or has possession of illegal homemade or improvised fireworks, please call us because the danger to the public is, is very great with those as we've seen elsewhere um, in the country recently. One of the most common calls that we go on is military ordinance. We do get a lot of calls with that with Charlotte's history uh, with military facilities here in the city and people's tendency uh, with, with veterans to collect military replicas. Sometimes these are live um, ordinance items, a lot of times they don't realize they're live and so what happens is when folks are moving into a new home or a relative passes away and they're clearing out their property, sometimes they, they find military ordinance. We get a lot of those calls. Again, if you find them, please call us. Don't touch it. Just leave it where it is and let us come assess whether it's going, going to be live or in our item. Um, so again, just want to go back to the most important thing is if you see something, please say something about it. If it just doesn't fit, it probably doesn't. Give us a call. If it turns out to be something that's innocent, it's okay. You're not wasting our time. We just appreciate the call. And again, I want to go back to what Lieutenant Jessup just said. We appreciate the partnership we have with Charlotte Fire Department. The hazmat unit is an integral part of our team. If you see us out there at Panthers games, the, the uh, soccer games, Knights games, any big event, you will see generally a few bomb technicians in conjunction with, with the hazmat tech, and we can't do that uh, without them, so we appreciate their partnership. So thank you. I'd like to turn that back over to Captain Koch. Appreciate that. Uh... Sergeant Strong and Lieutenant Jessup, are there any questions uh, about the call out last week or any questions about the bomb squad in general that uh, the experts here can answer for you? Could you uh, talk a little bit about what makes these homemade improvised fireworks so dangerous for you guys and why you really are encouraging people to make calls on those? So the reason why that improvised and homemade fireworks have such a danger to them is because there's no quality control in their manufacturing process. Generally, folks are coming up with these based off recipes they found um, out, you know, where, wherever they can find them. So the, they're not done to strict standards. They're mixing explosives that they have either made, and therefore those are very sensitive and dangerous themselves just by the way that they're manufactured, or they're mixing explosives that shouldn't be mixed, and they're not aware of it. And so what happens is as these materials 
degrade or dry out, the sensitivity increases, and so just moving them, touching them, and any, any type of uh, manual handling can, can cause them to inadvertently detonate with, um, without you knowing it. And, and also, with you not having the proper experience to manufacture them, you might not know how much explosive you're putting in there. And so you might not realize how much of an explosion you're going to get, and therefore when it does go off, it might have consequences that, that you weren't expecting. Also, can you speak to the rise that you all are seeing? You know, can you give us some numbers? How many calls have you responded to this year versus prior years? So we have averaged over the, the past 10 years, we were averaging about 60 calls per year. And then when we start, when Charlotte started taking special events like the Democratic National Convention, the Republican National Convention, the All-Star Game, the events related to, to those bigger events, our preparation and our calls for those ha have gone up. Um, so now, generally, if, if Charlotte does see a larger event, we're, we're averaging in excess of 100 calls per year. This year, we don't really, without a big event, we're, we're estimating that's probably going to go down to about 80. Um, but our, our calls are continuing to rise. Um, but we, we just we are seeing more and more folks um, experimenting with things as the the ability to get the information on on how to manufacture them is becoming more more prevalent via the internet, and you're we're starting to see it see it a lot more. I think a lot of it is curiosity. To be honest, we we haven't seen a lot of folks doing it with you know, ill intentions. Um, people are just doing it out of curiosity, out of fun. Um, but, you know, it is still a violation of um, not, not only just laws, North Carolina general statutes, but also um, the ATF has jurisdiction over sometimes so as well does the FBI. And that's what people don't realize is you might be taking tannerite, for example, and putting into a PVC pipe and going out into the woods just to have a little fun, but it, it is, it's, it's very dangerous. And that's primary, the reason why it's illegal is because it is so dangerous. And, and so, um, I guess, because you don't really realize what you're going to get out of it. Can you talk about the damage that you guys have seen uh, in any of these cars, whether it's, I, I hurt my hand, I blew up my house, I burned out the forest, like what, what kind of damage have you seen? Uh, I guess the, the most recent thing I, I can think of is, uh, about a year ago, we had some folks that caused some significant damage to the hand when they were making homemade shotgun rounds, and they were using them in a muzzle loader, and they had put too much propellant into a shotgun round, and it caused the overpressure of the muzzle loader, and it took off some fingers. Um, and so we, we have, it, it's rare. Um, thankfully, it's not something we see a lot. Um, a lot of our calls are just good intention calls that turn out to be something innocent. Um, but so as far as actual live explosions and significant damage, we haven't seen it a great deal here. And is it last week you said you talked about was that a house that this thing was found at and who put it there? It was actually found on the side of the road in the Myers Park neighborhood. It was found, um, if you can picture the, the sidewalk in the grassy area that's in between the sidewalk and the street. Uh, what it actually ended up being is it was a replica Claymore. It was, it's, um, a military style mine, but it was t fashioned into a trailer hitch. You can buy these on Amazon actually. And so what had happened was instead of someone securing the trailer hitch to the truck with the proper uh, cotter pin, it was being used with a piece of rubber that shredded and the, the trailer hitch actually came out of the truck. But what ended up happening is as it tumbled, it ended up in the grass facing up with the sign that says point towards enemy facing towards the, towards the sidewalk, which obviously causes citizen concern. And, and quite honestly, I, I feel like they did the right thing to, to call us based off that.